Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails today, a walk from Pentuwin. Today our adventure begins in Pentuwin and we're going to pick up the coast path heading towards Blackhead. We've read that it's unwalkable. Join us today to find out if it is. Pentuwin is on the south coast of Cornwall near Mevergizzi. Pentuwin is an attractive little village with a village square and a harbour. The harbour was developed between 1818 and 1826 and became a major China clay port for about 100 years, shipping up to a third of Cornwall's China clay. However, mining and clay waste frequently silted up the harbour, making the nearby ports of Foy, Pa and Charlestown more attractive and that sealed the fate of Pentuin's harbour. So for our walk today we've parked here this is the main park car park in Pentuan. it's april 2022 and i've paid five pound for all day it's a nice big car park as well for today's walk we're using a bob acton book around st austell it's walk number six medium and long walks based on Pentuan. so just taking a quick look at the map he takes us along the coastal path then we head inland and come back along a road to the top of Kingswood and back to Pentuin. The terrace, the little Anglican church of all saints and the delightful houses with their long colonnaded veranda date from 1821. But some things here are much older, for example many of the windows of the houses look Tudor or Jacobean. Part of the south wall of the church may even be older, possibly Norman, and the remains of the arches at the back of the houses lend weight to the belief that this is the site of a small monastery. An old name for the terrace was Monk's Walk. Oh wow, I didn't understand that this was the church building. I thought it was just another house in this absolutely beautiful colonnaded terrace, actually called the terrace. So inside the All Saints Church is this display board about Pentuin and its history, heritage if you like. And the one that really captures my imagination is this one. We've got a book with us today written by A.L. Rouse and he describes the Sunday school treat where the kids and everybody, the kids, the adults behaving like children were packed into the China clay wagons for the Sunday school treat. We'll tell you more about that later. It's wonderful to see a picture of it though. Absolutely great. Look at it. So from here we're going to leave the terrace behind and join the southwest coast path for what promises to hold beautiful views but challenging ascents and descents. Are you ready for this? Yeah, I'm a little bit um, nervous to be honest with you. How are you? Well, it's supposed to be unwalkable, isn't it? So you know we like our old books and this one is Walking in Cornwall by J.R. Hocking. He walked around the coastal path in 1936 which was before the National Trust owned great tranches, in fact, most of the coastal path. And it wasn't ex as accessible then, but let me just read you what he says about the stretch between Blackhead and Pentuan. So he was going the other way. And he said that one wilts at the precipitous 280 foot western side and at the site of the corrugated coast beyond. He finishes up by saying that he was absolutely defeated. I intend to try them again from Pentuin one day, but in the meantime, I insist that they're unwalkable. What's happened? I think they're about to go. Oh dear. Yeah. Mm. I've got six miles. I've got unwalkable shoes for unwalkable cliffs. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. First glimpse of the sea. With it being spring, 
There's so much to admire and distract us all the way. We've got the bluebells, the pink campions, the onion flowers. The speedwell is out and I think the stitch work too. Oh, and I forgot. <laughs> Over there, the other side of this bushy stuff is actually the sea. We can hear it, can't see it. believe they're not butter cups. Oh what in the field? Yeah. It's covered, isn't it? Beautiful. Under your chin. No, it's just too hairy mate. Uh, it's not that hairy. <laughs> okay. I know, we're getting there. We're oh Oh wow. Oh wow. Grip and head dumb oh you can see it all. What do you think? Beautiful, isn't it? Isn't it? Stunning! It must be Blackhead then, the one that juts out by that. I believe it must, yes. It's so one stretch we haven't done, isn't it, between here and Port Pian. And look behind you! <laughs> oh wow! Oh, I think the views are going to live up to this. I'm so, so excited. That's oh wow, and that's oh wow. Yeah! <laughs> Where do I look? Do I go that way? Or do I go that way? Or do me. I go that way? You could look way? at me and you could go, oh wow! <laughs> oh wow! Oh no! <laughs> you just slipped! The views are very very welcome as a distraction to the up and down. They're wonderful. I don't mind walking this type of terrain with that sort of reward at the end of it. It's just stunning. So this it. is Paul Redden. Paul Redden, yeah. I think he's got a note in there that Rouse pronounced it Paul Redden. Oh yeah, Paul Redden. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. So, okay, so, so this is from a Charles Corsley poem. Okay. And it says, it says, um, perhaps indeed the fear of invasion does haunt those who lived at this farm. So it must have been a farm here. Yes. Years and years ago. I quite like this. It says, John Paul Rudden, all of a sudden, went out of his house one night. When a privateer came sailing near, under his window light, they saw his wine, his silver shrine, they heard his fiddlers play. Tonight, they said, out of his bed, Paul Rudden will take away. <laughs> I like that. Oh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> I'm sick. So is there a well-known story with this family? Well, this is a poem, a Charles Causley poem. It goes on to tell how they bore him down the height. He never returned and the great house fell into ruins. Oh, okay. So, uh, the story was first written down in the 17th century. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So, basically, he just disappeared. Yeah, and he the house fell into ruin. Up there somewhere. Dangerous cliffs. Owners hold no responsibility for trespassers' injuries. Okay. <laughs> Come along. And suddenly there's no hedge to protect you. Wow. This might be the first climb. The two people over there, you can distinctly see them in their bright colours. So it goes up there along that cliff top over there and there are a couple of quite high stretches between here and Blackhead. Wow, <laughs> we can do this. I know you're all sat at home saying oh we thought that part of the cliff path is nothing to worry about. I've just seen the sign there. <laughs> it says owners do not hold any responsibility for trespassers injuries. I know. Mm. <laughs> Do you think that might be on the site of the old manor house? It would make sense. It's the only substantial building here, isn't it? Yeah. It's incredible. It's got a lovely view. New one. Not quite all glass. <laughs> Amazing. I love the cows in the front garden. That made me puff. Got a bit of jelly legs. 
Yeah. You climb up quite quick, didn't you? Yes. It's a lovely shot of the cliffs, though, haven't you? And I wonder if this is the bit of the cliff where they would quarry straight out the side of it. Oh. Yes. Look at that. Quarry. It makes sense. It does. So they used the Pentuan stone in lots of the uh, Cornish churches, didn't they? So that John Paul Rudd apparently made all his wealth out of the quarry. Okay. He's a very, very rich man, apparently. Yes. That, that poem's about. But I knew someone once and he owned a quarry. He didn't make any money out of it. In fact, he was stony broke. Oh. My dad used to work in a quarry. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, and they say I'm a chip off the old block. Oh. young aren't you? Are you little steers? Oh hello! <laughs> They've all got names! Look Metallica and Useful I can see and there's another one there I can't read. It could be twins because they're both called Metallica. <laughs> they're gorgeous! Oh. Hello! Hello! Little boy's How sturdy do you think out fences? That's where we could go on holiday this year. Where? Cows. Ah! Now, according to Bob's book, right. there's 53 steps here. He okay. obviously counted them. Right, well, I did that in the last two glaze video, so you know. So we're not going to repeat repeats. it, are we? No, no. 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 You can count them. You can, I counted them last time. I don't know if I can count to 53 and walk and film. It's a challenge, really. <laughs> go on, off you go. Hmm. Quite a lot of them, isn't there? Perhaps you can count them, boy. Four, five, Six. 42, 43, oh dear. And they've kind of collapsed. Counting no longer possible. I enjoyed that. Counted 49. I think they started to collapse at the end, don't you? Yeah. I still counted up though. Oh, did you? Yeah. I gave up. Oh, okay. So <laughs> Look I'm a at pro. This. Oh, okay. If you are enjoying today's video so far then please remember to subscribe if you haven't done already give us a like okay, and as you come around this corner you are faced with a monster of a cliff face so that's 280 foot it looks it as well doesn't <laughs> it, it? Does it's it. high yeah are you oh, up no. for this Oh yeah! It's beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely stunning. Never been here before either. So far, this path has been spot on. There hasn't really been any problems, That's has been they? fine, isn't Very it? Very walkable. Well, there are steps, obviously, but... So, we've back done it. in 1936, yeah. we're assuming it didn't look like this, did it? No. And, um, obviously it was before the war. Yeah. So, I think a lot of this coast path came into the ownership of the National Trust after of the Second World War, so uh, I don't know how he would have been doing it because he obviously couldn't walk on private land, could he? No, that'd be trespassing, wouldn't it? But there's there's a good example of why coming up here. Let's show our viewers. Hello. This thicket that maybe was impassable at times. Think what? <laughs> <laughs> so we're thinking that maybe because of things like this, the trees, the brambles here on the left. Perhaps that's what made the path at the time impassable or unwalkable and it was just too effortful to get from one place to another. I mean, oh yeah, look, I think we could be on something here. This could be the reason that they've had to trim these back. This has been cut back to keep the path open. And of course, look, we have a bridge now. This probably wouldn't have been here. No, exactly. Yeah, kind of scramble for all this. I wouldn't want to go through it. I bet that's boggy as well. And you don't know how deep it is, more to the point. There's obviously a fallen tree here, a bow. And there is a little stream here, so yes. Perhaps for all of these reasons, it was unwalkable. But it does make you appreciate this facility, this amenity that we have these days. We are just so lucky. We are so we? lucky, and I don't think we fully uh, 
acknowledge how lucky we are and probably sometimes. we're guilty of that because we live here we've got this right on our doorstep and we know we're lucky and it does we are humble about it you know we're not not trying to be boastful in any way it's it's maybe that life takes over and you don't think about it do you it's a simple pleasure as well just being outdoors yeah. isn't it but we do get a lot of comments from like people in America especially yeah. and they say well you just can't walk like that in, in our country no. you've got to go to a special sort of uh, park for it haven't you and, and the, the national parks are there are obviously huge and absolutely beautiful, beautiful. but we've been reading we've got so many footpaths here haven't we there's so many places you can walk it affords us so much freedom doesn't it although there is something in the background about that I must dig that out and let you guys know if you've got a local footpath you love you must register it on this particular website and you might have seen it going around Ooh. still got a way to go yet we're still climbing we haven't done the 280 feet yet Nearly there. <sighs> Jelly legs. Oh. oh my goodness me, I didn't look behind me. Oh wow. It's walkable, but it's sure challenging. <laughs> well we won't tell them that at the start of the video. Okay. Because then they'll click off. So it'll be a se little secret. Yeah. So we'll find like a, a really impressive title for this video. Yeah. What be the unwalkable cliffs. Indeed. But it's not our fault, it's not clickbait or anything like that, because you put it in that book, no? No, it's not clickbait. That's fine, all right. Honest. On you go then. Honest. Done it. Need to catch my breath. Wow. That's invigorating. That is really steep. Like this, you go up really quick. Wow! Good. Ooh. Get the blood flowing. <laughs> it's quite steep, isn't it? Yeah, but great fun. It is fun. Love it. And now we go down again. Oh, it's like a fairy glade, isn't it? A little woodland glade. Feels much more inland. Can't hear the sea anymore. Oh, and another little bridge. <laughs> Where's our doggy? Oh, he's that side. Oh, <laughs> fun, I'm taking photos of your sea glass. <laughs> yeah, there's only tiny little pieces here, which makes sense because they've probably travelled a long way, haven't they? And a few, yeah. Well, there's a, a bit great bigger. Big and then that. there's this enormous thing. It's huge, isn't it's it? It's so thick it probably hasn't broken down. Did you manage it? to get a photo of that with sunshine coming through it? I did. I did. So we might pop that on Instagram now. Do you know what? This beach is absolutely stunning, isn't it? It's so quiet. It is one of those secret little gems in Cornwall, isn't it? It reminds me of Talon Bay Beach. But not quite as busy. Well, yeah, and I actually, I'm putting this on record, I actually think it's prettier. Yes, I do too, because you, it's a bit more secluded, isn't it? The cliffs make it feel like an amphitheatre and they protect it, and it's so warm here today. Yeah, I could spend an afternoon here, it's not that good.
feeling refreshed after our picnic lunch. And what a spot for a picnic. So this beach is called Helene, H-A-L-L-A-N-E. I'm gonna rename it, I think. I'm gonna call it Heaven, because there's nobody here. And you've got a fantastic view. And it is just beautiful. This waterfall over here. This must be coming from the stream we crossed over on the little wooden footbridge. Oh, look! My goodness me, it's like Necton's Glen, isn't it? I think if I get up here, oh, you can frame the headland through the hole. There'll be people at home watching this now saying, here, full time, and now I need to have a wee. Bye bye, beautiful beach. where we cross the little stream on the wooden bridge and carry on up the valley towards Trevisic Farm. So we're going to go through the farmyard, join the lane. I think we're on the right track. Very good. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I've got nothing with that. No. Uh, <laughs> nope, nothing. No, no. nothing. Five minutes later. Yeah, I've Normal service has been resumed now. Um, yeah, I, I clearly lost track then. Oh, you can't use the same word. Oh, can I not? Okay. No! Uh, Alright, come back to me then. <laughs> I think like a track, you're, pe you're petered out. Oh, hang on, you, hang, this isn't fair. <laughs> um, no. Track, lane. Lane, yeah. Road. Yeah. Um, no. Uh, Oh, I, I, I knew someone once that was named after a small boat. <laughs> yeah, it's called a lane. It's called a lane, yeah. There we are, you can have that. Old one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh sorry, puppy. <laughs> I also know someone that was named after an ambulance. She's called Nina. Oh, that's very tenuously linked to a road, isn't it? <laughs> I've moved on there. I'm not doing names. <laughs> We're heading to a place called Lob Shop. Lob's Shop. It's really difficult to say. <laughs> and then we're going to turn left. Oh look, Andrew. Farm, isn't it? Yeah. We came out on this road. It's, on, it's the right road. <laughs> but we came out at a different point to where we were expecting. We were thinking we would be going through that farm over there, weren't we? We were, but we were effectively picking up the same road, so... No odds. We're, we'll get there in the we're, end. We're not lost. We're not, not quite sure where we are. <laughs> would you come walking with us? <laughs> Right. That's to Trevisic, and that's the farm we should have come through. Right. And we're just meant to cross this road. Okay. Because that's Tower Road, and this is Lob Shop. Give me the doggy. I'm going. Oh, over. wonder what he sells. He's lobbed it in. Oh, okay. Good idea, Andrew. A bit gate leaning. Need to do a bit of gate leaning. Oh, need a bit of a breather. And you can see right out to sea. Oh, beautiful. Let's just lean here a minute. Oh. I think we've just stepped back in time. East Tarran and West Tarran farms. Just going to check we're on the right path. So on the map, we are here. We've just gone through the farmyard and it says to ignore. Well, that's just a, that's, that's, there. It's just a field. Hmm. It's not a track, is it? Whereas on the map, it's suggesting there's a track all the way down to Kingswood. 
And that to me, my darling, to look like a track. We'll try that then. We'll try that. He's not very happy. Do you remember that lane we went down at Wall Leggan? He's a bit teasy. <laughs> I ain't getting lost. <laughs> We're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> The farmer back there said that the dead dog was going to bite us. <laughs> yeah, my dog bites dogs, he said. <laughs> Turn back. And we're there looking at each Hang other on, we going, walked five miles, we're... not walking back five I'm miles. I'm not doing a ten mile walk. <laughs> in, in fairness, he was alright. He, uh, yeah, he, he did tie the dog up, didn't he? He um, went down and talked to his brother about it and we were able to get through. But, yeah. Uh, I yeah. don't think we'd be recommending this, this particular bit of the walk. No, I think you're better off doing the bit, the mistake that we made, go through that little dell over the footbridge, come out at the little farm and turn left back to Pentuin. Yeah, or, or just retrace your steps along the coast path, I would have thought. Yeah, if you're up for it. Yeah. <laughs> really make me laugh. The ironic thing is that the bit coming back is more unwalkable than the cliff path, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it's still the unwalkable walk. It is still the unwalkable <laughs> walk. <laughs> anyway chalking that up to experience hopefully at the bottom of this particular descent through this rather wonderful old track there should be a woodland and then that heads back down to Pentuan <laughs> Pentuan Valley Trail go ye ahead that way that track really straight isn't it we think this is the track we were looking for we were looking for the old railway line that used to run from the china clay country in st austell to pentuan harbour pentuan harbour was where china clay was exported when we were back at all saints church we showed you the picture of the sunday school treat using the trucks that used to carry the china clay they were they were kind of washed out and everybody piled into them. Now we've got a book with us written by A.L. Rouse, who was quite a noted Cornish writer. Cornish childhood. Lovely extract in there that we want to read to you. It says in here, it says, In early childhood, there was the excitement of both Sunday school outings to Pentuan. Not a far cry, three miles stand the valley from St. Austell to the little China Clay Harbour, with its large beach, and Winnick, a grass-covered towers. A splendid play place. But the excitement was increased a hundredfold by the fact that we went down the valley not by the road but by the diminutive railway that carried the china clay to the harbour and coal back to the town. The trucks were cleaned out for this annual event and filled with Sunday school forms. We were a small, shrieking, gesticulating, singing trainload, children, parents as childlike as the children. But what violent pleasure it was! We couldn't have been more excited and tingling with expectancy if we were making a journey into darkest Africa. And actually, when we left the ob obviousness of the roadway behind us and the track took us beside the river skirting Kingswood, the river might have been the Limpopo and the wood equatorial forest. It was also exotic and thrilling. Dodgy shoe. <laughs> Back to where we started. Our walk today started with an unwalkable stretch of the coast path and ended with an unwalkable stretch of countryside. <laughs> But the first unwalkable stretch, the unwalkable bit from the 1930s, that's fine now. I mean, yeah. a bit up and down, but take your time and you are rewarded with a beautiful beach. Keeps uh, you going, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So we reckon it's about six miles, this one. I don't think we'd actually really recommend this route now because the inland bit, um, you, you're going through farmyards and what have you. And I don't think the farm is expecting people to walk through anymore, is it? It, it seems a little bit 
I felt a bit uncomfortable there. So if you can find an alternative route, then... Yeah, have a little look on the Ordnance Survey Maps. You've got a selection of little lanes that will bring you back to Pentoon, yeah. and there are other footpaths as well. The walk we've done today is about six miles, and the bit sort of, uh, the first bit on the coast path, if you take your time, it's beautiful. 